Hello again, welcome back everybody to another edition of the Rural Report. I am your Rural 2IC and uh, took a little bit of a hiatus. I do appreciate a few of you that reached out to me saying, hey, where's the videos? Uh, just uh, dealing with the little one, having a little bit of uh, an illness, nothing major, just a day or two of things. And uh, taking advantage of some warm weather and just taking a little bit of time off, trying to mentally reset, if you will. Uh, but all in all, things are good. Uh, the seed packages did go out to the winners. Uh, there was also, uh, I'm not going to mention names or who or whatnot, uh, that decided to donate the winning back. So that way we can help out those in need. So again, I'll make this announcement before I jump into this. That if you or anybody you know is having financial trouble and cannot afford seeds, let me know. I will put together a package and send it out free of charge. You don't have to mention who it's from or anything. We're not looking for recognition or anything along those lines. We just want to help people. So, and then uh, hopefully by Wednesday, or maybe next Wednesday, um, I'm going to shoot for this Wednesday, that uh, we'll uh, discuss on how we're going to do the seed exchange. So if you have any ideas about that, maybe we'll discuss that on Wednesday's live stream. So make sure you are there. Uh, otherwise, we'll try and make a decision no later than next Wednesday, but hopefully we'll have it wrapped up by this Wednesday. So, okay, without further ado, let's jump into this. And uh, again, in no particular order. Uh, let's jump right into what's going on with Israel. Okay, so starting out, Israel released a statement saying that Egypt bears a great responsibility for what happened on October 7th. Now, that was a very interesting statement. And so with all the tensions that's going on, uh, I was kind of looking for something along this line, and once I found it, that's when I put that down first so I can have everything that follows. Now, what follows is that the Israeli Channel 12 uh, reported that Israel's military plans for the attack on Rafah is already ready, and they're just waiting for a green light to go ahead. Now, just to put this in perspective, when all this comes down, uh, when everything happened, okay, uh, if you know your your geography here, there's not really many places for people to go when, when war breaks out. And you take whatever feelings that you want out of this equation, there are innocent people there. Now, whether that's 100 people or 100,000 people or whatever, okay, the point is, there is innocent people there. There's children there. And so a lot of people went south. And so they went down to Rafa because they were probably trying to hope that they can at least cross over into Egypt and have some safety. Uh, when Egypt put a stop to it, a lot of them had to basically remain in Rafa. And they kind of set up some different um, refugee camps and things like that. Uh, down there. So, at estimate, the last that I saw, there's about uh, 1.2 million people down here in Rafa. And so, uh, Egypt basically told Israel and, and basically the world, this is a red line, okay? You you keep your stuff, you do what you got to do, you know, we're going to stand right here, but Rafa is off limits. And so, uh, they made it very clear in Israel towed that line but never really stepped over it uh, they had to be reminded a few times um, and i, I want to make this statement too everybody it seems like is throwing out threats and red lines and all sorts of stuff and when you get things like the houthis and hezbollah and iran and north korea and all these places that are going through and doing all these things we're not talking about um just trying to project power and we're not talking about little nations or, or even just little uh, groups like, you know, uh, Houthis and things like that. Uh, those are just um, thrown out just to try and, and, you know, look at me, I'm pounding my chest or, uh, you know, whatever. Most of them, it's kind of like threats from North Korea. Could they carry them out? Hmm, debatable. 
but for the most part, you just kind of, you know, brush it off. Egypt, in my opinion, is a little different. I think they are an FAFO, and I think they will stand up, and if something happens, I believe uh, they will probably do something. Now, Netanyahu has submitted his request for remobilization for reservists. So, uh, that, that appears on the surface that they are getting something ready. Now, I was trying to figure it out because there's a lot of movement to the north. And so it kind of looks like, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to make us a line in the sand for Hezbollah. And so if you're at least putting up defensive, so that way Hezbollah can't come in and invade from the, the north. Okay, I get that. Well, there's other places, you know, you got to defend your east. And so I don't see a whole lot happening in the east. Now, uh, Golan and then different other ones, they're, they're still getting attacked and all that. But now there's a huge part that's taking place down towards Rafa. And I was like, okay, is this just a look over here, not over there? Or what is this? Well, uh, it looks like there was an Israeli uh, military plane that flew over Rafa and started dropping leaflets, basically saying, leave now. Okay, um, apparently there's world leaders that are taking this serious, saying, don't do this. Uh, you know, they're, they're suggesting it's a really, really bad idea. And I don't know what's at play here. I don't know if this is a power play of, uh, I have to, you know, do something and get something going. Uh, I don't know if this is a, um, I got to do this now and just take everything that I can. I don't know if this is a play to draw in, you know, we do something, somebody else attacks and now, uh, people have to get involved. I don't know what this is, but, uh, it's playing with fire of what this is. Um, so, uh, sad to say it, but it's going to be one of those sit on your hands and you're just going to have to wait and see. So uh, just FYI on that. Let's move on. So the country of Latvia has returned to conscription out of fear of war, uh, which is very interesting. Um, not quite sure that uh, Latvia is going to make a whole big difference in a whole bunch of things, but uh, you never know. The little guy sometimes can come in and pack that little tiny punch that, that kind of means something. So I uh, thought I'd throw that in there. Next, uh, Poland authorities say that the uh, internet was shut down. They're blaming this uh, not only as a large-scale cyber attack, it also affect part of Germany, if I remember right in the story. Uh, but they're they're blaming Russia. They're saying that uh, Russia's uh, cyber warfare and their GPS jamming has come in, and it basically took out all of the internet. Um, it was a pretty interesting map and everything to see uh, as they kind of showed it in real time. Just it, it was complete blackout. So all the people that say, oh, that could never happen. It did to an entire country. So keep that in mind. Uh, speaking of Germany, Germany um, made a call that they cannot wait for Russia to come attack them. And so that uh, Germany should bring the war to Russia. Like, that's a great idea. Um, I, I don't know anymore. We, we talked about this, about people trying to throw things, you know, around and, and look big and pound their chest and different things like that. But uh, I, <laughs> it's stuff like this. It, it just makes you laugh. Like, what are you even doing? Uh, but we'll throw it out there. Uh, next one's a little interesting. So there is a network of tunnels, uh, allegedly, that, that was found under the United Nations headquarters in Gaza. Now, uh, these tunnels were complete with office space, uh, steel safes, computer servers, and even a commercial-grade battery bank. Now, electricity for all this, get this, they tapped into the UN building above them. So, I mean, if this comes out to be true, which it kind of looks like it is, uh, I, I made this statement months and months ago uh, that this was kind of shaping up to be a UN versus NATO thing. 
uh, a bunch of people laughed at me then, and then people started kind of going, you know what, maybe you're onto something, but it's probably going to be a NATO versus BRICS. And I started going, mm, maybe you're right. But then again, maybe UN dissolves and it does turn into a NATO versus BRICS. So we'll just have to wait and see. Just figure I'd throw that out there. Next, uh, Bahrainian hackers uh, gained access uh, to very detailed maps and pictures of the U.S. military base in Bahrain. They did this by releasing a little bit of what they hacked and saying that they have a treasure trove more. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what comes of that. That's, that's not a good thing right there. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, anybody that does not believe in, in cyber warfare and things like that, and, and uh, I mean, just to kind of throw it out there, uh, the way that AI is taking off, and I know I'm going to go off into a small tangent here, um, AI, once it finally gets integrated, and it's going to be quick, I'm talking probably by the mid to end of next year, uh, you know, all the different things about movies and songs and poetry and, and artwork and things like that, that AI can produce and, and you know, half of a blink of eye. It, it's going to be one of those things that if you thought that the bots were bad on social media, uh, I think... I can't remember who it was, uh, and I read this somewhere. They were predicting that by the end of next year, if AI takes off like they think it, sh it should or will, um, that as much as 80% of all the content on social media will be from AI. That's scary. <laughs> Just saying. And, and we already hate social media as it is. But, I mean, think about this. Uh, I know Pinball said in one of his videos this morning, about the sound quality and, and things like that. If AI can go through uh, somebody's channel and see what they're talking about and start messing with the quality, you can't hear them, you can't see them, it glitches, it freezes, that makes people annoyed and, and they stop tuning in. Even though that person's a great person and they have a great message, if you can't get your message out and through to people, then there's going to be no audience. And so it's something that we should probably take into consideration. Not to mention, uh, anybody that's a content creator, or even if you've just been in the, the chat of somebody's live and see uh, the chat's going real good for 10, 15, 20 minutes, and all of a sudden, it's like 20 bots come out of nowhere, and it's just profanity and stupidness. And you're like, man, what happened? Wait until AI takes over. You're not going to be able to get a word in. Um, all right. I digress. Let's move on. So the Dutch... Dutch Dutch government <laughs> blocks the export, um, and this is actually not the government. I re I wrote this wrong. Uh, the du the Dutch government put through the approval for F thirty five fighter jet parts to Israel, but the Dutch court system blocked it. Uh, this is a little bit bigger than what a lot of people think on this. This is this is almost borderline sanctions against Israel, and this is kind of a first. Uh, you had your people that are against Israel, you know, obviously. But this is the first kind of diplomatic way of it. So uh, we'll see what comes about this. This is one that kind of, I think a lot of people just read this and, and moved on and not gave it its due. Um, let's see. So uh, yesterday, while there was millions of people, I was not one of them that watched this thing called the Super Bowl, the Senate passed a 67 to 27. Keep that number in mind. That is massive. There was a lot of people that crossed party lines to vote for this. A $95 billion emergency foreign aid package. You already know where it's going to go. It's going to go to Israel. It's going to go to Ukraine. It's going to go, I think, a little bit to Taiwan and the rest to humanitarian aid to Gaza. Uh, nothing for the southern border, nothing for the United States. Again, it is a foreign emergency aid package. So we're getting ready. If this passes and gets signed into it, basically $100 billion like that. Now, real quick, if you want to see what I'm kind of stressing about this for, Elon Musk posts on X uh, that the U.S. debt is unsustainable, and I couldn't agree more. 
Uh, he also posts the snippet that interest rates from just a year ago is up 37% and that if it stays on pace that we will be paying $3 trillion a year in just interest rates in less than a decade. Let your mind sink in. You may have to like pause this and really think that one through. $3 trillion in interest payments alone on the debt only. You're not paying anything on the debt. Just the debt of the interest. Okay, let's, let's move on. So, uh, U.S. Secretary of Defense, Mr. Austin, has been uh, taken back and he is now uh, re-hospitalized. Uh, looks like this time they did it the right way. They announced it, and his powers have passed on to uh, the second in commands. Uh, this one, though, they're saying should be pretty quick in that they're expecting him to only be out for maybe a day or two. So uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens out of that. Uh, next, the first Alaskan has been pronounced dead from what they're calling the Alaskan Plague, or some on the uh, internets is calling it, Alaska Pox. Uh, it's very, very interesting the way that all this is going down. If you, if you follow what happened in 2020, everything started happening in January and February, and it wasn't long afterwards that all the, the BS started. So... Uh, <sighs> Just heads up on all that. Is it going to happen? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. But a lot of things are lining up. And it's almost exactly the same. Uh, next, their news has uh, reported. And this uh, shows Mr. Jake Sullivan saying that the White House uh, is considering taking steps to sanction Hungary if they don't let Sweden join NATO. Now that's interesting. Uh, there's been a lot of people that have joined BRICS because of the fact that the U.S. is wielding the dollar like a weapon, uh, and they don't want that to happen to them. And so now the U.S. is trying to take over NATO and saying, hey, we're going to do bad things to you if you don't do what we want inside of NATO. Um, NATO, in turn, should put a stop to this and say, no, you cannot do this. Uh, I doubt that they will. Uh, and I doubt very much so that, that Hungary is going to bow. So, uh, and I hope they don't. Let's see. All right, let, let's jump into the last little bit of stuff for the sake of time. So, the White House comes out and announced that it is now officially joining, for campaign purposes, the app TikTok. Now, the reason why I'm laughing is this comes just after about a year after a piece of paper came across the Oval Office desk and was signed, banning it from all government devices. So I hope that uh, since this is campaign, that they're using personal devices for this, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they aren't. It's probably just another one of those uh, rules for the, but not for me, the two-tier justice system that we find ourselves in. Um, which kind of brings into... Uh, that the resident in the Oval Office uh, will not be taking a cognitive test as part of his yearly exam. And that kind of brings me into the point of uh, one of the people, and I'm going to paraphrase this, um, pointed out, and this was kind of in a, a uh, example from the Tucker Carlson and Vladimir Putin interview, uh, you, you have two leaders, okay? And one of them falls up the stairs, uh, doesn't know where they are half the time, struggles to form sentences together, um, and, and just had an actual federal document coming out clearing them of investigation because of poor memory. On the other hand, you have another... Uh, kind of superpower world leader that spent over 30 minutes reciting their nation's history starting from the ninth century in detail without straining or thinking you know really hard about it 
uh, providing dates, uh, looking cool, calm, and collective. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's one of those ones that uh, people can see that and they're pointing it out for a reason. Uh, it's not good optics. Um, we'll, <laughs> I mean, we'll have to wait and see what all comes about this. Um, I did make a video on my aftermath of the thoughts of that. Uh, during the upload, I had some sort of technical difficulties and uh, the video stopped and suddenly disappeared and I have no idea where it was. So uh, either I pressed something wrong or I have a gremlin or something along those lines, but uh, we'll see. Um, I do have some additional equipment coming uh, getting a much better microphone. I got one in to replace the tiny little one that I have now. Um, and I've got some other things, some different lighting, and then uh, a new camera coming for the computer. And so uh, hopefully the quality of everything will increase, as well as I will have uh, more memory, so I'll be able to record more videos have them edited staged and and all that stuff uh so we can we can continue on building the channel and whatnot uh, i have big plans coming up and i want to make sure that i am as prepared for it as possible so that's what i've got for you today i'm closing my book up that's that's all i've got uh, i will be back again tomorrow as long as uh, we don't uh, blow up in the meantime or anything happens in the middle which I don't foresee happening. Just FYI, I don't panic or freak out. Uh, I hope you guys have a really great Monday. I appreciate you guys staying uh, and hanging out with me. You made it this far in the video. Guess what? You rock. I appreciate you guys. God bless each and every one of you. Stay tuned. There's more information to come and say it with me. Now, above everything else, please remember to remain united because we're all prepping in this together.